So the Higgs boson is a particle predicted by a part of the standard model that is a consequence of the Higgs field. And the Higgs field is a, a field that permeates the entire universe and is what gives particle their mass. So they're, they're, imagine the particles flying through this field and their interactions with this field cause them to, to have mass. So the Higgs bosons are, make up the Higgs field? It's, it's, a, it's a consequence of the field's existence. It's, it's a physical manifestation of the, uh, the existence of the field. And what is its importance for physics? Why do we need to invoke its presence? So the standard model is incredibly successful. We've done an awful lot of measurements and it all works very, very well except for a few small little niggling pieces. And one of those niggling pieces is the fact that for it to really work properly, the fundamental particles must have no mass. And that's if you don't have a Higgs field or a Higgs boson or some similar process that gives them that mass. And so finding a Higgs boson implies there's a Higgs field, implies that we understand where that mass is coming from. So that's a pretty big deal in terms of understanding the fundamental nature of the universe. And how do we go looking for it? So the first, the first place you have to start is with a particle accelerator to accelerate particles up to very high energies. We think that the Higgs boson needs to be relatively heavy, at least about 130, 140 times the mass of a proton. And so we need um, high energy particle accelerators to try and create them. And they're created and then they disintegrate instantaneously and we look for the decay products. We look for the things it turns into with the, the particle detectors. So it's the decay trace that you're trying to look for rather than right. the particle itself? Yeah. And I mean, how do you predict what that decay trace might look like? So the, the first part of that is to understand how often you're going to produce it and what, um, what the, if you like, the, the different angles it could come out of your, your collisions at, depending on the theory that you have, you could get uh, different phenomena. You'll, you'll see Higgs bosons with different, different distributions, different energies, different momentum. And so that's the first point, is to understand how you can make it. And once you, once you think you understand that, you can run it through the calculations, make some predictions. Then you need to understand how it's going to decay, and that tells you how it's going to appear in the detector itself. And so you will look for signatures of different types of particle being produced in the detector, depending on how you want to look for the Higgs. And what's the current state of affairs? Where, where are we at with trying to detect it? So the current state of affairs is that we've just collected this year slightly more data than we collected in the whole of last year. We've already, we've already doubled that data set and we're, we're still analysing it, but we will be announcing results probably next week with the, uh, with the, the latest updates. The, the only results for the moment that are, are finalised and published are those from last year's data, where we saw perhaps the first hints of a signal, um, but not, not statistically strong enough to, to claim anything yet. And what sort of signal was that that you found? So in some of, the, some of the ways that we look for the Higgs boson, we were seeing a few too many events around a, a particular mass um, there, were, there were a few extra at about 125 GV, a few extra around 119, a few extra around 135, but none of them were really big enough to say, ah, oh, we found it. So we're hoping either with this data set that we've just got now, we'll be able to push, some of those will turn out to actually be real, or one of them will be real, and we'll get bigger, and we'll see more events um, in that area. Um, or it will turn out to be a statistical fluctuation and we'll see nothing. And then we'll, we, we, we've got the rest of the year of data taking to go. We should get at least um, another equally sized chunk of data, probably more, before the end of the year. So even if we, uh, we're still at the hint stage now, by the end of the year we'll know one way or the other, I expect. And when you say too many events, what are these events? Are they the production of particular sizes of particles? or? Um, so really, we're just counting, counting things. So the protons collide um, every 50 nanoseconds, and they're, they're approximately, at the very highest intensities, about 20 of those 
are going to cause something to happen in the detector every, every 50 nanoseconds. And we then look at the signals in the detector and we, we decide, could this be an event that contained a Higgs boson or could this be an event that contained something else? And we count them. We just say, okay, this was an event which had a mass at 120 GV. This was an event that had a mass of 121 GV. And we just count them. And in the end, we, uh, we have relatively complicated procedures to estimate what we would see if there was nothing there. Compare that with what we do see. And if we see more, that means the sign of a signal. If we see less, well, that could be a fluctuation or it could be another problem. There may be a, a problem with the calculations. But all those things are, are possible. Well, what would be the impact either of the discovery, the definitive evidence for the particle, or also definite evidence that the particle doesn't exist? So either way, the impact is pretty huge for the standard model. If you, if you find a signal, this is, this is the missing piece. And then we have to get about trying to figure out what actually have we seen? Is it, is it you know, the most boring scenario where it's exactly what we were predicting? Or is it something more exciting where we've got something that doesn't quite fit but does the job we were hoping for of, of, of giving mass to the particles but actually does it in a slightly different way? That, that, would, that would be very exciting. But also, even if we see nothing, because we need, you know, because the standard model seems to work but, but except for this mass problem, we need something to explain. If we see no Higgs boson, we need another explanation.